All right, what does it mean when we do something called quadratic inequalities? What does it mean when we do anything, inequalities? What's different that we have to do as opposed to quadratic equations? So first of all, the signs are different, right? Either less than or greater than, or less than or equal, or greater than or equal, right? And if we graph them, what's true? What do we have to do for this? Oh, a dotted line? And what do we have to do for this? A solid line, right? What else do we usually have to do if we're graphing? We have to shade, right? Now, when we had a line, greater than was above, less than was below. That was easy, right? If we have a parabola, do we have an above and a below? We don't, do we? What do we have? Inside and outside. Okay? We're going to be either shading inside or outside when we do uh, this kind of inequality. Okay? Or this kind of quadratic is what I meant to say. So... Let's start here. Y is greater than or equal to x squared minus 9. Now sometimes when we graph, we just sketch a, a quick graph. And sometimes when we graph, we plot exact points, right? What time do you think this is? We got to plot exact points, don't we? Because we got to know where to shade and where not to, OK? Now what we can do is we can use our transformation rules, can't we? If we use our transformation rules, where do I move this parabola from, from the origin? Down 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So that's my new vertex, right? Is it parent function shape? Well, do you remember how to tell if it's parent function shape? Is there a multiplier up here? There's not, so it is parent function shape. Does it open up or down? And how do you know that it opens up? Because it's positive. So I, I'm going to go over 1, up 1. I'm going to go over 2 from the vertex, over 2, up 4. And I'm going to go over 3 and up 9. Now, did I just make up those numbers? No. What's 1 squared? 1. What's 2 squared? 4, and what's 3 squared? 9. Okay? So here's the deal. Um, <clears throat> I don't have to know that this point is 1, negative 8. I don't have to know that this point is 2, negative 5, do I? From the vertex, if I go over 1, up 1, over 2, up 4, and up th over 3, up 9, I know that that's in the correct point, in the correct place, right? I don't just know these four points, though, do I? Don't I also know this point, and this point, and this point? I do. How do I know that? Because it's symmetric, right? A parabola is symmetric, okay? Now, what kind of line do I draw here for this parabola? A solid line. And how do I decide where to shade? Well, I could choose a point, couldn't I? What if I choose the point 0, 0? 0 is greater than or equal to 0 squared minus 9. So 0 is greater than or equal to negative 9. Is that true or false? True. 0 is greater than or equal to negative 9. So I'm going to shade where it's true. The point that I just chose was true, so I know inside is true. That's where I shade. Okay? Any questions? Okay. What if it looked like this, though? y is less than negative 5x squared, and y is greater than 3x squared minus 2. There's two of them now, so do we panic? No, that's, that's rule number one, right? Don't panic. 
We just graph them one at a time, right? So I'm going to graph this first one with pink. So does it move up or down at all from the origin? It does not. Um, is it parent function shape? No, because it has a multiplier, right? And does it open up or down? It opens down because of the negative, right? Okay, so this time, I know it's not parent function shape, so this time instead of going over 1, down 1, I'm going to go over 1, down 1 times 5. What is 1 times 5? So over 1, down 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, which means I also know that point right there, right? Instead of going over 2, down 4, I'm going to go over 2, down 4 times 5. 20. Can I go down 20 on this graph? I cannot. So I'm just going to... Oh, wait. What kind of line do I draw? Oh, dotted? Okay. I'm just going to... Sometimes it helps if you make the zhuzh. Not really. Okay. Where would I shade this one? Well, can I choose 0, 0 this time? I can't, right? I always want to choose 0, 0 because it's going to be the easiest, right? Putting things in for 0 just gives you a 0, right? But I can't this time because the vertex is on 0. So let's choose something like right here because that's in the middle of it, and it's kind of it's f a little far away from the vertex, so there's no confusion, right? So what point is this? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So the point I chose was 0, negative 6. So if I put that into the top equation, because that's the only equation I'm concerned about right now, I get negative 6 is less than negative 5 times 0. So negative 6 is less than negative, oh, sorry, 0. Is negative 6 less than 0? Yeah, so where would I shade? Inside the pink or outside the pink? Well, where's the point that I chose? Inside, and the point that I chose was true, so I'm going to shade inside the pink. Everybody understand that? So the only answer that's possible right now is like all the stuff inside the pink, right? Okay. But since it's a system, I'm not going to shade yet. I'm just going to tell myself where to shade, right? So how do I graph this second one? I'm going to graph it in blue. How do I graph the second one? Down 2. Does everybody understand that? Remember transformation rules? As I go down 2. Um, it doesn't move left or right any because there's nothing inside the parentheses here, right? Okay. Um, is it parent function shape? No, there's a multiplier. And does it open up or down? And how do you know it's up, opening up? Because it's positive. So instead of going over 1, and up 1, I'm going to go over 1 and up 1 times 3. Instead of going over 2 and up 4, I'm going to go over 2 and up 4 times 3. So, twelve, right? And I, I can't go any more than that, so I'm just going to leave it at that. What kind of line do I draw? dotted. Okay. Can I choose 0, 0 this time? Is my blue on 0, 0? No, but the pink is, right? So maybe I want to choose something like right here, so there's just kind of away from all that. Okay. So if I choose 0, 2, I put in a, a 0 for x and a 2 for y. 2 is greater than 3 times 0 squared minus 2. So 2 is greater than negative 2. Is that true? So I shade where? Inside the blue, right? So where is the part that's true for both? Yeah. It's tiny, isn't it? It's like... Right there. That's the only part I can shade. Because it's the only part that's true for both. Are you okay so far? Okay. So, can I show you something? 
I hesitate to show you this because it confuses some people. But for the people that it doesn't confuse, I would like you to see it. Is that fair? If I go to my calculator and start a new document that's a graph, I'm going to zoom in so you can see it. You're not going to be able to see the equations very well, but that's what we got to do to see the calculator. I want to graph an inequality. So see how my cursor is right there right now? What if I hit delete? I need less than. So I can choose number 2. Y is less than negative 5x squared. Enter. It graphed it and it shaded. What it won't do is give me a table. Okay? If I hit tab again, it's a completely blank line. It's for a relation. Okay? And I could say y is greater than, and I have to go right here, control equal sign. See all the inequalities right above that? Control equal, which gives me greater than, that's the one that's chosen. 3x squared minus 2. Now, why would this be confusing for some people? Because it shades for everything. It doesn't wait to shade to see what's true for both. It shades everything. So some people see this and think that the shading is the answer. But what's the actual answer here? Like the purple shade. Right? There's red shade up here and blue shade up here or down here, but the only answer is where they're both shaded, which in this case is the purple shade. Okay? I know that might be confusing to you. If it is, don't look at it. But it is a way to check, right? Um, and if it's not confusing to you, it's, it's a really good um, tool to have. Does everybody understand? Okay. So, yes, sir. Say that again? This part right here? Yeah, so there's, a, there's actually an infinite number of points in here. Right? Obviously this point, because that's the one that's right there, so 0, negative 1. But also like negative 1.5, 1, positive 1.5, 1, it's probably in there. Negative 1 point, I mean 0.25, negative 1.25 there's a ton of points in there the only like nice pretty integer point is 0 negative 1 why can't this point right here be an answer it's on the edge and so it's dotted and so the dotted points don't count right the ones on the, on the dotted line don't count do they okay any questions about that that was a good question by the way though okay so what happens if your problem looks like this? What if it looks like 2x squared minus 5x minus 3 is less than or equal to 0? What if that's what it looks like? Am I graphing that? Is there a y? No, I just need to solve it, right? Well, remember how at the beginning I said, what's different? You know, if we're doing this, what's different? And you guys said nothing, except when you graph, you shade. But what about when we're solving an, an inequality like this? Is there anything different? So just the equal sign, right? So nothing changes in the way we solve it until the end. So how would you go about solving this? So we've got our five ways, right? We've got our graphing, square roots, factoring, completing the square and quadratic formula. Graphing's probably out because there's no y, right? Or I guess technically the instructions for this says solve algebraically, so I just don't want you to graph, right? Square roots is out because there's an x term in here. And unless we want to complete the square, to do square roots we can't. So we can complete the square if we want, but most people usually try factoring first, and then if factoring doesn't work, they'll go to quadratic formula. Are you okay with that? Well, AC is negative 6, B is negative 5. Can you think of two numbers that multiply together to give me negative 6 and add to be negative 5?
Negative 2 and negative 3 multiply to be positive 6, and I need negative 6. Good guess, though. Multiplies to be negative 6, adds to be negative 5. Anybody? Um, what about negative 6 and positive 1? Oh, okay. 2x squared minus 6x plus 1x minus 3. And then I just need to drag this part along with me for now, right? Until I get until I get x equals or something, I just got to drag this along with me, don't I? Okay. Factor in by grouping since there's four terms now. What's common in the first group? 2x. What's left if I factor out a 2x from the first group? x minus 3. What's common in the second group? Yeah, knowing I have to factor out something, right? A 1. What's common in these two groups? x minus 3, and what's left? This is kind of where we have to ignore this for a second, okay? What do I know that I have to do right now? Set them equal to 0, right? So x minus 3 equals 0, 2x minus 1 equals 0. I'm going to add 3 to both sides to get x equals 3. And I'm going to add 1 and divide by 2 to get x equals 1 half. Is any of that any different from what we've been working on all week? It's not, okay? Here's where it changes, is right here, okay? I am going to sketch a quick graph, not a real specific graph like we just did on the other problems, on these, right? I'm not looking for exact points. The only two points that are important are these two, right? It crosses the x-axis at 3, and it crosses the x-axis at negative. Can, can I, what did I do? Oh, right here. Do you see it? This is supposed to be plus 1 which means this should be plus 1, which means this should be minus and minus and minus and minus. I know what the answer should be. I just couldn't figure out what I did. And then I finally did. Do you ever do stuff like that? You guys know negatives are my nemesis, right? So, sorry. You can forgive me, though? Yes? Okay, good. Okay. Now, does this parabola open up or down? Up, right, because it's positive. Okay. So, like that right? So I need to draw this because now I have to figure out what the answer is. Now, go back to your original equation. Where is this parabola less than or equal to zero? Where is this parabola less than or equal to zero? Do you see that it's less than or equal to zero right here? All the stuff that's below zero is the answer, right? So all the x values are these x values right here because this part of the parabola is less than or equal to zero. Does that make sense? So my answer is everything in between those two points, right? So negative one half is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to three. Now, can I show you another example that I think will help cement this in your mind? What if the other example I want to show you is this? 2x squared minus 5x minus 3 is greater than or equal to 0. Do you understand that all this work would be exactly the same? And we would still get x equals 3 and x equals negative 1 half. And then when I go to graph it, negative 1 half and 3, and then I would say, what part of this parabola is greater than or equal to 0? Do you understand that it's this part and this part that's greater than or equal to 0? It's the part that is above 0, right? So do you understand that it's all the stuff on the outside of the parabola? Because if I, like, took this parabola and, like, flattened it up to the axis, do you see that this part would be the part that's true? 
So this answer would be everything that's less than negative one-half or everything that's greater than or equal to three. Do you see the difference in the answers? This part is in between these two points because that's the part that's below. This is the part that's one or the other because it's the part that it's above. Yes or no? Okay, do you have any questions on any of this? Do you feel like I need to do a whole bunch more examples of this for you or you feel confident? Confident? Okay, mark it as I go.